Hi, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com and today I'd like to share with you a few fun alternate project ideas that I came up with using the contents of the May 2018 paper pumpkin kit from Stampin' Up! titled Manly Moments. This kit came straight to my mailbox and contained all the papers, envelopes, stickers, adhesives, embellishments that I needed to make five of each of these intended cards. All I needed to provide was my clear block to use with my stamps, and this free one was included in my first kit, and a scissors. And as a subscriber, I really, really love that I get a new stamp set and a mini ink pad or two with each kit, and I can continue to use them even after the kit that it came in is completed. In fact, I just made these fun thank you cards for the FIAD teachers at my kids' schools from these past paper pumpkin supplies, a circle punch, and some extra cardstock. Each kit also includes a mini publication with photos, written directions, and tips, and gives you a link to get to the how-to video. I love that we also have a ruler along the bottom so you can measure your ribbons and twine, and on the back side you'll find some other useful information including the supply list and coordinating Stampin' Up! colors. Because these kits are a Stampin' Up! product, you'll find many other Stampin' Up! products that coordinate with the supplies in the kit. In fact, I'll be using a few extra supplies as I share my unique projects. You can find these items listed below and linked to my online store. You can also look below for links to learning more about paper pumpkin kits, starting a subscription, renewing your subscription, joining my paper pumpkin fan club on Facebook where we share lots of fun ideas, and seeing some peeks of exclusives that I send my personal subscribers. And if you're watching my video on YouTube, you can also click on the link below that will lead you to my website where I've shared close-up photos of what I'll be making today. Let's get started. I already shared a few projects in a Facebook Live video that I did when I first got my kit. These are those projects right here, and they're very simple, very easy to make. So you'll want to make sure that you catch that video, but we're going to go ahead and make a few more things. Now normally I don't dive right into the 12 by 12 scrapbook page idea, but I'm going to this time. We're going to take the card base that is that soft seafoam green color. It's kind of a, a pale version of it. This is a new color. And we're going to trim that in half right on the score line using our paper trimmer. And then we're going to build up the mountain base and the lake base in the background of each with the stickers. Now we're doing that with both sides. So if you really, really love this card, you may not want to make the scrapbook page layout. <laughs> And before we peel off the backing on our dimensionals and stick these down, we're going to trim these a bit. We're going to trim off about two inches from the top. And now we're going to bring in some linen thread and we're going to wrap about three times around the base of the tree line. And we're going to actually tie this one in the back. And this one here we tied in the front. And we're just going to space out the thread so it looks like these two are kind of connected to each other, like they're flowing together. And then we'll tie this in a bow. So we already did a knot, and now we'll tie it in a bow. We're going to work on the base of our pages next, and we're using Pear Pizzazz cardstock. It's 12 by 12, and we're going to pair that with four sheets that are the same from our Woodland, uh, our Wood Textures Designer Series paper that is carrying over from the 2017 through 18 annual catalog into the new 2018 through 19 catalog. So yay, that's sticking around. So you'll want to find four matching pieces of that. We're going to go ahead and stick this down. And I've already actually adhered one to the flip side. Because it's six by six, it does fit very nicely at the bottom of your 12 by 12. So I've done that to two 
pages and now we have the base of our 12 by 12 layout and now we're going to bring in a few pieces to stamp we're going to stamp on one of these little labels and one of the banners and then we're going to stamp across the top section of the designer paper so we'll open up our mossy meadow ink pad and we'll mount our stamp I like to mount my stamps at an angle so that I don't get distracted by the straight edges of the clear block. And you can see I use my banner to kind of space out where my other two images on the white tag we're going, going to go. I don't have to stamp all the way across here. In fact, on this piece here, I'm going to start on the right side and go this way and end just a, you know, a little bit short of the, the end of the page. And now I'm adding rhinestones between each word, doing that on both pages. If you are a scrapbooker, and you've gotten kits in the past, you'll want to check out my past paper pumpkin videos, blog posts, that sort of thing. I have made a page layout, or at least a page, with practically every single kit. I want to say every kit, but I, I can't guarantee that. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to cut some photo mats. Let's set those aside. We're going to take out our paper trimmer again, and Mossy Meadow is a color that is returning. Ooh, that's really close. Mossy, Mossy Meadow is a color that is returning and it is the color that coordinates with the trees and the ink in this kit. So we're going to go ahead and take our trimmer, lifting up the arm here. This is 8.5 by 11 cardstock. I'm going to trim to 4 and an eighth by 5 and a half. Now the reason why I'm doing 4 and an eighth is because with um, true digital size photos when they are developed they are 4 inches by I want to say five and three eighths of an inch. At least that's what mine have been. So um, this would give it a nice eighth inch border. Um, actually be like a sixteenth of an inch all the way around each photo. So again, four and an eighth. And we'll do that. Um, you're gonna do four, actually you're gonna do six mats this way. So five and a half by four and an eighth. And I have a few more done already. And then I also took one and trimmed it in half thinking that I might use smaller pieces, so we'll see. Yes, sometimes I create my projects <laughs> right while I'm doing the videos. All right, so let's go ahead and bring the pages back in. This is what the layout is going to look like. I'm gonna zoom out a bit here so you can see. And we're gonna add these two pieces here. Then we're gonna bring a photo mat underneath. Maybe bring this down a bit here. I am so into symmetrical pages. I'm sorry, that's my style. I do sometimes make um, you know, things that are kind of all over the place, but I do like to have things very even. <laughs> and then our title piece is gonna go up in this corner. I think that's the mathematic, mathematical kind of personality trait I have here. This piece will go up here like that, and we're gonna trim that down just a tad. I think one will fit over here. So we're just gonna trim this piece down. We'll add a few more photo mats on this side. Let's grab our trimmer again. And I think if I trim off like, mm, I don't know. Let's try, let's try a quarter of an inch and see how that fits. That means, of course, that we'll be trimming down our photo. That will work out just well, really well. So, yes. So now this piece is five and a quarter inches. <laughs> You'll also discover with my styles, I like to get a lot of photos on one page layout. Um, I actually scrapbook with these <laughs> and I take a lot of photos, so. We're going to cut another photo mat, and this one is going to be for one of those panoramic photos. I have to kind of, I think I measured it, but I'm not sure if I measured it right, so hang on a minute. Oh, we're going to 
going to trim off another quarter of an inch, then I'll tell you what it is. So, seven and an eighth inches by four and an eighth. And then we're going to trim that other half. Remember, this one was four and an eighth by two and three, um, two and three quarters. We're going to trim that down to two and a half. And I believe that should fit in that space. Yes. Okay. So when we're putting these two pages um, together and we're, we're taping everything down, you'll want to make sure that when you have something that's meeting up equally on the other side, that you line up the top and the bottom of your pages so that you, here let's zoom out a bit, top and the bottom of your pages so that when you um, connect your piece and you put it into your page protectors in your scrapbook, it still stays lined up. So that's what I would put on first and then the rest of the things don't necessarily have to be right next to each other when you when you stick everything down, but it, it helps. It helps to be able to see everything. Another hint that I want to give you on this layout is that when I put this piece down, this, um, this uh, photo mat, it went right up to this edge of my 6x6 six six layer. So for those of you who want to do that exactly the same way I did, there you go. A couple more steps. I'm going to trim this down just a little bit more to 4 inches so it fits better above our little centerpiece thing there. And then the last thing is just putting on a couple more rhinestone embellishments. And there is our finished layout. And this is going to be perfect for trips that I'm taking to my parents' lake place. Um, we're going to go on an Alaskan cruise this summer, so lots of great photos um, could be captured and put on these pages. I'm so excited. When I made my Facebook Live video, I cut down one of my envelopes, and so I'm going to use the other portion of that envelope, and I'm going to trim it. to five and a quarter inches wide. By five and a quarter inches wide. And when I um, trim this, I want to be careful not to trim right on the fold of the envelope because that sometimes makes, makes it kind of ratty. So five and a quarter by five and a quarter, and now we're going to fold this in half. We're going to go with the green side showing as we fold it corner to corner. The bone folder helps to give good crisp creases. Do that in the opposite direction. Just ignore that score line that is already in the envelope. Now envelope paper is thinner than cardstock. So this is going to be the best choice for doing this type of 3D project. I don't recommend cardstock for this. Now we're going to flip it over and we're going to take a ruler and a pencil and we're going to measure in from each point one and five eighths inches. Just kind of make a pencil mark there on each of those little spots. So after you're done making your scrapbook page, you're of course going to have an extra envelope or two. And if you're a scrapbooker and not a card maker and you need an event to make some fun 3D little boxes for, then you'll have 10 envelopes from this kit to do some fun little um, creations with. So now we're going to bring in our stamp that has kind of that little uh, ray of sunshine look to it. And we're going to stamp that coming from this spot that we just marked with our pencil. And now we can take and put our eraser on all those marks, get rid of any marks you see. And now we're going to fold opposite edge to opposite edge, like so, so that we can see the wood grain side of our paper. 
making sure that the edges meet up really well. Do that in both directions. And what we're doing is we're making what's called an origami square base. So you see how I did that? I took these two sides like this and I just closed them in on each other like that. And I have two triangular um, handles on each side this way. Okay. Now we're going to bring the open section of our base towards us, the closed away from us, and we're going to fold again. But let's go ahead and give all of those creases one more press down with the bone folder. We're going to bring this bottom edge and this bottom edge together to meet next to this crease line. Now you don't want to have them overlap. If they're not touching, that's better than if they are overlapping. And the paper is going to feel stiffer when you have extra layers that you're folding together. So what you've made here is a little kite shape. You're going to flip that over, keeping the open end towards you, and you're going to do the same thing to this side. See how it's not perfect down here? That's quite all right, as long as they're not overlapping. Now we're going to open up this little section here. We're going to stick our finger in there and we're going to flatten it down so that this crease is lining up with the crease that's coming down just through there. And again, use that bone folder. Do the same thing on this side. Get your finger in there if you can <laughs> and flatten it out and line up the creases. Do the same thing to the other side. So, so if you've never done origami before and you're following me doing the same project, you are now doing origami. <laughs> we're making what's called a Starbucks. Okay, now we're going to take and we're going to kiss or bring these two flaps together. And then we're going to flip it and we're going to bring those two flaps together. And we're going to do an extra fold where the creases are already sitting here, but we're going to bring it this way instead. So you've already got creases there, you're just going to bring those two flaps in, flip it over, and bring in these two flaps. Okay, so now you have the perfect little kite shape. We have one more step to do, and that's folding all of the points upward towards the wood grain design here. So we're going to take this top layer. Now we have several layers here, if you want to see. We have quite a few pieces in there. We want just the top layer and we're going to bend upward and we're going to give it a crease. See now we're starting to see that fun little design. Flip it over, do the same thing, just the top layer and give it a crease. Now kiss this top section and this top section together flip it around, kiss those two together, and set it down. And now you see what you'd seen before, <laughs> but we're doing the third and fourth sections. So now we've got this layer that folds up. And if you flip it over, you've got one more layer to flip up and fold. So these are the, the petals or the stars, uh, the little points of our star for our box. So if you look at it this way now, and you kind of open it this way a bit, you can see that it's going to become a container. These little points here are going to also start to come outward as you pull it open. You just kind of have to push on the bottom to flatten it out. So you're kind of putting a little air in there. And these become the parts that hold the box. And if you want to, you can kind of push and give it a little soft crease all the way around like that. So now you can see our fun little design. The next thing, next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some of this linen thread again and we're going to tie it around the top. So I'm just going underneath each of the little petals that come out from the star box 
and I'm going to tie the linen thread into a knot. And I'm going to just flip up one of these so you can see where the linen thread is. See, it's right there at the very top, all the way around. So we're tying it. Now we're going to bring in some corrugated elements. And they have these fun little tags in here that have, um, so let me show you the different shapes that come in this. There's hearts, there's ovals, and then there's these fun little tags. So we're going to take one of the tags and we're going to flip it over because this is kind of a crumb cakey color. And then we're going to take some washi tape or some masking tape or a post-it note, doesn't matter what, and we're going to cover up the all, let's see, all for, for all you do. <laughs> we're going to cover up the all and the do on this stamp image. And what we're doing is we're masking. So we're, we don't want ink to get on the all and the do part. And we're, we'll bring in our Mossy Meadow pad again. And we'll ink that up. And, oops, I got a little ink there. I have to be careful. Now we can pull this away, making sure that we don't get that on our fingers. And we can stamp that down. And it's pretty lined up. So it looks like the words are sitting almost on top of each other. And you're going to stamp that down onto the tag and now you have a for you tag instead of for all you do. Clever, huh? <laughs> and now we can take and bring our twine together and we're going to just bring it right through the hole. Separating these pieces out, we'll tie a bow. And we can add some of our favorite candy. <laughs> mint. Mint is my favorite flavor. Gotta love it. If we can stuff it in there. There we go. So now we have a container with some mint, uh, chocolate mint cookie, whatever they're called. I don't know what they are. <laughs> I think it's chocolate. Mint chocolate. Here, I'll grab the bag. It's called Milk Chocolate Mint Cookie. And I bought this, oh, I want to say around the holidays. Yeah, because it's got some little reindeer stuff in it. But I think, even though that this chocolate's a little older, I think that you can still get this in that same mint color, the mint macaron color. It matches pretty darn well with that envelope. And this is just another version with the uh, paper folded the opposite way. So those are origami star boxes with your extra envelopes that you'll have when you do your scrapbook pages. I have just a few more simple cards to show you. So one thing that I do for my personal Paper Pumpkin subscribers is I gift them occasionally, every once in a while. It's just a random thing. And it's been a while. <laughs> so it was time to gift my subscribers. So I sent every one of them that had gotten this kit uh, a little package with um, a little Whisper White card base that's been punched with the Everyday Label Punch. A couple layers that they could use with that. This is Mint Macaron, which matches the kit, and another Whisper White. Um, then I also included 3x3 three three pieces, just random pieces from the uh, Wood Textures Designer Series Paper Pack. A strip of our Silver Glimmer Paper. A little section of our Designer Acetate, our Designer, oh, can't remember what it's called, <laughs> Designer Foil something. Fabulous Foil. Anyways, you'll see it in the bottom in the description. <laughs> then I took some Mossy Meadow cardstock and I used one of our upcoming new die sets. This is called our Nature's Roots Framelits. Love this bunch of framelits. <laughs> and so die cut a bunch of these. Actually, my assistant did. Thank you so much, Vicki. And we included them into each envelope. So what can you do with this piece here? Well, in Minnesota, we get we get snow and winter a lot longer than we want to. And this year was no exception. <laughs> we were all dying. It was snowy way too long. So I thought to myself, well, it kind of reminds me of a wintry, icy lake. So if you're doing this card and you don't get to your kit until winter time, you can add this instead of the mint macaron sticker there and it will look like um, a little icy lake with sparkles on it. You could give it maybe as a Christmas card. Um, so anyways, thought that was a fun idea. But let's go ahead and take these pieces first and we're going to hold the card shut 
as we stamp some images from our stamp set. We're going to use the Tuxedo Black Memento ink. And let me grab my stamps. And we're going to start by inking up the stamp that we want in the middle of the message. So I'm going to stamp birthday first. Now keep, I'm keeping the card closed with that window um, right there. I'm going to try to center this right in the middle of the window. And then we're going to stamp the happy above and the to you below. And now I'm going to add this piece to the, um, to the top layer. I'm just going to put a little bit of snail adhesive there. You could use glue dots from past kits. Any kind of adhesive will hold this, I'm sure, a flat adhesive. And if we flip it over, we can see the silver side. You're going to see the gold side or the silver side no matter what. But because we're going to add the silver strip to the front of the card as well, I thought silver on silver would look really nice on top of each other. So let's flip this back over one more time and add some dimensionals. You don't want them really close to the left edge, which is what this is going to be here, because we're going to slip something under the left edge. And now we're going to flip this over and center it right above where the frame is of our everyday label punch from the um, that's punched out of the card base. So the way that I got them to line up before I sent them out is I inserted that punch into the cardstock, and I'll show you on this side. I inserted it all the way, and I just punched it. And then I had another piece of cardstock that was the same depth. Um, that was the white strip there, and I just inserted it again and punched it all the way. So that way I knew that they would line up. Now if they don't line up, let's say you're one of my subscribers and it doesn't line up exactly, you could always trim one of the two pieces down a little bit if that helps. So now we want to take this piece and we're going to run some adhesive along the whole length of the strip, and we're going to slip it under here like that and tack it down. Trim off the excess. Now we did put adhesive all the way down for a reason because now we're going to take and just trim out a little banner end on it like that. And we can add that right here next to that one. And if that's not, you know, as fancy as you want it, I think it's a nice simple card, um, then you can always add a little bit more to it, but I, I love it. Happy birthday to you. Super simple card. Here's another happy, oops, let's do this one first. Here's another um, card that's similar. It says happy anniversary, and I just took that extra piece and cut it into two sections and stuck it right next to um, the strip that's already there. So they're, they're just flush right next to each other. That one says happy anniversary. I love you. See how you did that? So you stamp that, and then when you open it up, it has another little message there. <laughs> so there's another one. And then this one I did vertically, and it says happy birthday um, with the fun little spray out image there. And I just took this extra section that didn't fit on here and made it angle out so it looks like it's made out of, I don't know, material or something. And there are the final three cards in that style. Now I have another one that I want to show you using the pieces, mint macaron, the tree. So again, I like the look of this. I think it looks very lakish, you know, <laughs> like it's a body of water. So we're going to take and do the same sort of thing where we stamp a message in that little window. And let's go ahead and this time let's take and add the adhesive directly onto this piece. It doesn't matter either way. It is cut, by the way, just to size because I needed to gift a whole bunch of people and I, that's the best way I could make it work mathematically. <laughs> so just know that you are going to be edge to edge on that little window piece. Then this, we're just going to tape that down straight. We're just going to put it flat against the rest of this. And it might help to open it up so you can see that window shape. There we go. And then this tree, we're just going to mount that onto some dimensionals. And that can just go right down here in this corner. Like that. It's a very simple card. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
And here's another version where I took some of the, um, the Wood Textures designer paper and I tore it. Did a little layer there and instead of using that in the window, I used it, I trimmed it into a couple pieces, pieced it together behind the tree to make it look like little waves of water. <laughs> Happy birthday, son! Thank you, thank you, thank you. So there's a couple other cards. Here's another idea with those supplies. And again, these are great ideas, especially if you have run out of all the consumable parts of your kit, but you still have your stamps left. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking that same card base and I'm taping the pieces together. So I have the bottom taped here and then I've put some tape. Now this is our sticky tape. This is our tear and tape sticky tape. I put another strip right across here and then I'm going to put one on the side. Put one on the other side. And it doesn't have to be precise. And then let's just put one up here so that it doesn't open up at the top. Okay, and then we'll take the backings off. And then we're going to close it up onto itself so it's nice and straight. Now, this is going to be for inserting a gift card. So I found some ribbon that coordinates with that gift card pretty well. We've got some coral in here, so I thought we'll just bring in the Calypso Coral um, Ombre Ribbon. And then we're going to use that strip, that silver strip, and we're going to adhere this strip down just below where you can see here there's a little corner, uh, like a little divot. There's the divot there, and then there's the other one on this side. So we're going to put it right below there. So we don't want to have adhesive across the whole length of the silver. And then this will help too to have grid paper underneath so that you can kind of line up everything and make sure that it's straight as you're sticking it down. And then let's grab this ribbon and just wind it around from the back to the front and give it a, a tie. And you can do a knot or a bow. And it doesn't matter where it's being tied because you can always adjust it. Just bend your card like that and you can adjust the ribbon. Let's grab one of our stamps and our ink and I think I'm going to use the Memento um, Tuxedo Black again. And you sort of have to have the whole thing assembled in order to know where to stamp. So let's just kind of tuck that ribbon off to the side. And there we go. So now we have a fun little gift card holder. And you could definitely put this in one of the medium sized envelopes that we carry. Very simple and sweet. I have one more card idea. So for this last card, I have an extra shield piece and a, a banner piece left over from my kit so far. And I'm going to bring in the 3x3 wood, um, wood textures designer paper, plus just an extra card base that I have from my stock of cardstock. This is early espresso. So I'm going to take my snail adhesive and put some regular snail adhesive on the back side. Again, if you have glue dots from past kits, you have plenty of adhesive, I'm sure. This stuff lasts forever, those little glue dots. Okay, now we have that stuck on there, and we're going to put this on top of that, just right in the center. Now, I know that some of you might be thinking, oh my gosh, for this kit, you're going to layer up two set of dimensionals on every card. But if you see where I put my dimensionals, I stuck two up here, one down here. And when I put the banner piece across the middle, it squishes down like that. And really, if you send it through the mail, when you put this extra one on here, let me show you. When you send it through the mail, it's really only one dimensional thick. So it's going to work with regular postage. So you should be good on that. And just a very simple to put together Father's Day card, um, clean and masculine and handsome. <laughs> 
Now that you've watched my video, I hope you can see that there's so much more to these kits than meets the eye. Never tried paper pumpkin? Not sure if it's something you want to get month after month? Well, the kits in the U.S. are just $19.95 plus tax. That's it. What if you don't like the kits? There's no commitment needed. You can stop your subscription at any time. Thank you for watching. It builds creativity to think outside the box. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can catch more Paper Pumpkin videos that I've shared using past kits and more that I'll share with future kits. Also, be sure to visit my website at stampyourartout.com so that you can view close-up photos of these projects, see photos of other Paper Pumpkin kit ideas, and see many other great ideas that I share using Stampin' Up! products. And to receive some extra exclusive Paper Pumpkin project ideas, get your subscription started with me as your demonstrator. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye.